It's lukewarm and sometimes slightly nasal timbre. And nasality is not something that you typically find in Western classical music, except perhaps arguably with the oboe. But as an aesthetic, nasality is not something you find too, too beautiful usually. Um, one might consider like Indian classical music, which has a very nasal sound to it. Um, and but nasality is, is, is certainly an important part of the melodic, um, making the melodic range wide, and also the, 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 even though the relative range of the instrument is, is rather small. So those of you who have, who's ever played a musical instrument, like learned a musical instrument, you might have noticed, noticed that a Western classical instrument has <coughs> keys if it's woodwind, or, um, it, but a pretty large range. Um, the duduk doesn't have that range, um, and but it doesn't mean that it's less beautiful or less able to pull at our heartstrings. So the duduk music traditionally reflects the intonations and colors of traditional dialects of the Armenian language. This skill, passed through the oral tradition, is perhaps the most important to learn for duduk players. These might include solo repertoires for sad songs, dance music, and folk music. In addition to specialized performing techniques, a strong commitment to construction technique is necessary to produce this unique timbre and musical expressiveness of Armenian Duduk music. Generally, the music is also improvised. And when we say something is improvised, that means that it's not, it traditionally doesn't use notation um, for its performing. Um, that has, of course, changed in cer to a certain extent, but um, we'll talk a little bit about that. And if you guys have ever been to a jazz concert, you would notice that the music is improvised quite often. Okay. So the same tune played by one performer can sound slightly different from another when another performer plays it. It doesn't mean that it's less authentic or less true. So um, each performance also has to adapt to the various environments that it's being performed in. Um, for example, if a player feels that he should change the mood or adjust to the situation, he may utilize what's called a melisma. And, and this is defined in the Armenian context as an ornament. And those of you who have studied Western music, you might think of a melisma in the chant tradition with melismas um, as being connected notes, notes that connect together in a very smooth way. Um, and it's defined a bit differently here in the Armenian context. Um, in addition, there's usually a drone player who they use circular breathing. Have you guys ever heard of circular breathing? Well, it's, it's a pretty amazing technique. You block the windpipe with the epiglottis while maintaining pressure in the facial cheeks. And so basically what you do, you're playing, and you suck up air, and you hold it in your cheeks. You blow out that air while you breathe through your nose. <laughs> it's kind of challenging. Other instruments throughout, there are other in instruments that do that. I play one instrument called the shakalaki, which is a Japanese instrument. Um, you can also do circular breathing with that instrument. Um, I don't do it very well, but others do. Um, <laughs> the didgeridoo in Australia also uses circular breathing. So these are, these are other instruments that 